Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I'm going to do a bit of a rant video for you guys and explain that people need to stop doing their assistance exercises as feats of strength. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skill up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Uh, because people need to understand why you do assistance exercises like dumbbell presses, like curls. Uh, these exercises are not intended to display your strength. They are intended to bring up weak points and they're not even primary exercises. Right? These are secondary exercises. I don't care what your training goals are. I don't care what your training goals are, whether it's to just be fit, to be a football player, a power lifter, a bodybuilder, whatever. Those exercises are never going to be primary exercises and they are not feats of strength. And what I would tell most people, keep your displays of strength limited to competitive lifts. Because, you know, I'll be honest, even though, yeah, we might use a few other lifts and say, you know, it's pretty impressive that that guy did that much weight on a dead hang weighted chin up. That, that is impressive. We don't have strength standards for a lot of things, right? Save your showing off for lifts that actually are competitive lifts somewhere. In other words, that you can be compared to other people under some sort of rules because no one cares other than a few kids who are easily impressed. No one cares that you do some non-standard lift, non-competitive lift for some heavy weight. It really doesn't matter because you're not able to, to directly compare that to people. Uh, stick to competitive lifts other than a few occasional things. You know, I can understand why a heavy weighted chin up, even though that's not a competitive lift, uh, could still be considered a pretty good feat of strength. But when we start talking about these secondary exercises, smaller exercises that are not loaded across a large number of joints to where you can disperse the stress should not be done with maximum effort or using some sort of cheating form uh, to do them because that's how you get hurt. I mean, dumbbell presses, a perfect example. Curls, a perfect example. Look how many guys are getting hurt with cheat curls. Or showing off like uh, Callum Von Mosier tore biceps, showing off doing a two-person curl, right? That's a, absurd. It's absurd and it's stupid. But dumbbell presses are a perfect example of one where people mess this up. Um, and we see it all the time. We see injuries from this. And what's the whole purpose of a dumbbell press? usually to bring up some sort of deficiency in your chest, right? People do these as secondary exercises because let's be honest, I, I don't care what you believe. The truth is you cannot build as much overall muscle mass with a dumbbell press as you can with barbell bench presses of whatever angle or a weighted dip or any of these bigger movements. They don't have the same muscle mass potential, but what they can be good at is bringing up a deficiency. They're secondary exercises. They're there to get a deeper stretch on the chest, uh, to add some additional workload to the chest, maybe for people who are, are lacking chest development. Maybe that's a weak point for you, and I don't care whether it's an aesthetic weak point or a performance weak point. There is something to be said for bringing up and balancing your musculature, right? Even, even a power lifter understands that if their chest is a weak point for them, they could be benching a lot more weight if they can put some more size onto their chest. And sometimes that involves working a function or a range of motion that you might not be otherwise getting. And a dumbbell press does that effectively, right? It allows you to get a deeper stretch on the chest because your hands can go deeper than your rib cage. You can't do that with a barbell, can you? Of course not. But you're also at a higher degree of risk. It is actually easier to get injured with dumbbells than it is with a barbell. It's easier to get injured. And enough people get hurt on the barbell bench press, we don't need to be adding extra degrees of risk by getting hurt on your secondary exercises like dumbbells. Uh, but these sort of exercises are good for hypertrophying and reaching certain muscle fibers that may not be getting enough of direct training on your primary exercises. So like a dumbbell press allows you to get a deeper stretch, get a little more volume. Uh, they're harder to balance. They're harder to get into position sometimes, but they allow you to do that. Yet, what do you see people do? They treat it like it's a max effort exercise. You see people use weights on these that they're not capable of doing through a full range of motion, which defeats the whole purpose of the secondary exercise. 
Uh, they're not getting the, the deep stretch that they need out of the bottom. They're using a heavy weight. They're putting them through a bad bar path and potentially injuring themselves just to show off on these lifts. These sort of lifts are not intended to show off on. They're there as secondary exercises to help you bring up your weak points. You don't max out on them. And maxing out also includes using piss poor form uh, and partials to try to lift more weight than you're actually capable of doing. And people need to think in those terms. When we start talking about these secondary exercises, you have to get out of your head that you're there to use maximum weight. You're there to reach muscle fibers that you don't normally reach, right? They're there to bring up weak points. And that generally means not lifting maximum weight. That means getting the full range of motion it means checking your ego out the door and using these exercises for what they're intended for. Because you know what? No one cares how much you lift on a dumbbell chest press. They don't. It's not a competitive lift. It's not a contested lift anywhere. But it can be a real good hypertrophy tool. It can be a really good hypertrophy tool. Particularly for people who have that area where it can focus on is, is a lagging area. And it can be good to teach you to use a stretch reflex in your pecs. Right? That's the other valuable thing with these secondary exercises. They can teach you to recruit the muscles in a slightly different way that can also carry over. In fact, what you will oftentimes see, that's a perfect example, people who learn to get that stretch reflex with a dumbbell on a chest press all of a sudden go back to their bench press and then they start saying, man, I really notice I can contract my pecs harder out of the bottom now. Yeah, because you've trained yourself to learn to use the chest more when pressing. So it can correct a deficiency with your main exercise and then all of a sudden the bench press starts adding more size to their pecs again. And they get stronger on the bench, they get more pec involvement, and then the bench press becomes a better chest exercise for them from doing the secondary exercise. But if you're just doing it to show off and try to use maximum weight, it doesn't do that. It doesn't work and all you do is hurt yourself. Same thing on curls, guys. Curls are there to help bring up a lagging bicep. They're there to teach you to use your biceps more. And if you can learn to do that, that will carry over to exercises like your chin-ups, which are a primary exercise. But people get this idea that, you know, that again, they're going to show off on a curl. Well, the strict curl has become a contested lift now, but how many people who are showing off on curls are doing a strict curl with their back against the wall going all the way down they're not. They swing and they cheat and they do partials and they do all this stuff to show off to use a heavier weight than they're capable of using. Uh, you know, hey, we could argue that compound movements are better than isolation movements, so maybe the cheat curls are helping them out. But if you're just showing off and doing partial reps with a heavy weight on a secondary exercise like that, you really are kind of wasting your time. It's a waste of time. All it does is get you hurt not doing the exercise for its intended purpose. You guys need to learn to check your ego at the door on these secondary exercises. If you want to show off your strength, you know what? Go do a power snatch. Do a deadlift. Do a clean and press. Do a bench press. Do a squat. Do that as your displays of strength to show off because those are the lifts that are competitive lifts. Those are the lifts that you are going to be compared against other people on. These other exercises are there to help you bring up deficient areas, right? To put muscle maybe in an area where you need to bring it up more. You don't do that by doing shitty form with weight heavier than you're capable of lifting. You do that by reaching those other muscle fibers, getting a deep stretch, working with enough volume through a full range of motion to really help bring up your lagging areas. That's how you do it. They're not ego lifts. They're never intended to be, and they shouldn't be used that way. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.